Once upon a time, Conor McGregor ran amok in the featherweight division, and not a single soul was safe. There's not a man alive that can come on this soil and beat me. Fighters on the lower end of the rankings of the contenders, the number one contender, and even the champion, all failed before the shadow, the biggest MMA superstar in history. But during his rampage, McGregor crossed path with a fighter by the name of Dustin Poirier. And several years later, that same Dustin Poirier would orchestrate the end of the notorious era. In 2014, McGregor Mania was running wild in the UFC. Within one year of his debut, Conor had emerged as the biggest star in the featherweight division, and it was warranted. People are always saying about the talk, and I talk, and I talk, and I talk, but guess fucking what? I back it up! I back it up! He talked and talked, but when it came time to perform, McGregor lived up to his bragging as he picked the round and concussed people accordingly. On Saturday night when I go out there and put Diego away in the first round, I'll prove my worth. Fans loved him, and Dana White pushed him to the top of the 145-pound division in record time. It's exactly as I planned, yeah? I didn't say we were here to uh, take part. I said we were here to take over. You know, I I'm looking to get a, a, as quick a turnaround as possible and, and climb that division, and one by one, I will eliminate the whole division. When I am finished, there will be nobody left. Dustin Poirier served as the first true test for the rising superstar, a fighter who could strike and wrestle. But despite the step up in competition, McGregor continued his boisterous trash talk dismissing the top five contender as a hillbilly from the circus. Uh, look, don't get me wrong, I like the kid. He's a quiet little hillbilly from the back ass of nowhere. You know, I've nothing against the guy, you know what I mean? The shit talk was relentless and absurd. And at that point, Dustin was only 25 years of age. He was young, and while the fight was a step up for McGregor in regards to competition, it was a whole new world for Poirier. He was out of his element when it came to psychological warfare and pre-fight spectacle. Goes the wind and he does the chicken dance, you know what I mean? Coming up against me, that's not going to be good. You know, I'm going to crack him with a jab and, I, and he's going to wobble and I'm going to put him away early. It's going to be a first round KO, mark my words. Poirier tried to maintain his composure early on, but his opponent got to him. And at UFC 178, McGregor made good on his pre-fight prediction, knocking out the diamond in the first round to secure his first top five victory. That being said, the Irish superstar did not emerge unscathed. A punch from Dustin early on broke half a tooth, and while it was inconsequential to what McGregor had done, this little moment, in hindsight, served as foreshadowing. McGregor went on to achieve otherworldly fame in the MMA world while his opponent was left with a mark of shame. One loss to McGregor was career suicide as you were forever relegated to being in this shadow. I annoy you being here when this is kind of, you know, people have called it the Conor McGregor show. There's a lot of buzz. Does it kind of bother you being here? Not really, man. I'm past that. You know, I'm not looking in the rear view. I'm having fun again, and uh, I'm not worried about it. Good for him, man. But while McGregor sat on the sidelines after his lucrative boxing match with Floyd Mayweather, Poirier kept grinding in the shark tank that is the 155-pound division, scoring numerous victories over high-level athletes. But no matter how much Poirier accomplished, he carried the loss to McGregor each time he went out to battle inside the octagon. Eventually, Thanks to his body of work in the lightweight division, Dustin Poirier was handpicked by McGregor for a shot at redemption. Why are you fighting a guy that you already knocked out in a minute and 46 seconds, although it was in 2014? Why are you fighting that guy again now? You know, Dustin's at the top of the division. He rose up after that and became a champion. He also has knockout wins over Justin Gaethje and a win over Dan Hooker, who's in the co-main event. So he's still right up there at the division. He is actually at the very top of the division. As entertaining as McGregor is, you don't really see him in rematches of fight he wins. But Dustin Poirier was an exception. And in 2021, seven years after the initial fight, McGregor versus Poirier 2 was set for UFC 257. But coming back to 155, fighting Dustin Poirier again, and with Habib walking away and the championship seeming to be up for grabs, or the, the, the Mega Medoff rematch on the table, Conor McGregor seems so focused. The intention was transparent, and the grand plan was to push McGregor back towards the lightweight title. And Dustin, who was a perennial top five lightweight, was the easiest route to accomplishing that. On paper, he was the easiest fight for McGregor, as proven by their encounter in 2014. The build-up in contrast to the first fight was classy and respectful. Yes, I did get the win over him the first time. Um, but, you know, he's rose right up and he's, he's back up there at the top of the division. So I'm excited to go and, and compete with him again. Respect was maintained. 
promises were made, and it was a pleasant ride to the main event of 257. But at the event, the unthinkable happened. Conor McGregor was knocked out by Dustin Poirier in the second round of the fight. The mystique took a massive hit because McGregor was untouchable in the feet, and yet, the guy he had dismantled in one round years ago withstood that atomic left hand and gave McGregor a taste of his own medicine. In short, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, and the UFC megastar was pushed to the end of his rope. His popularity within the MMA world was peerless, but his credibility as an elite fighter was now brought into question, all because of Dustin, the Diamond Poirier. I've got a lot of experience in this game, and and like I've said, I just don't care anymore what, what anyone thinks, so it's whatever, whatever. He's a pro, man, and nothing but respect. We're one and one, maybe we have to do it again. A trilogy fight was booked months after UFC 257, and McGregor reverted to his old persona and evolved into someone much more sinister. The promise about donation never materialized, and this omission served as a catalyst to reignite the bad blood and the animosity. The UFC 264 pre-fight press conference had all the hallmarks of a classic Conor McGregor spectacle. He rode in with a signature look and talked like he always did, but Poirier was least interested. As a testament to his maturity as a person, the former interim champion shrugged off the trash talk actually landed the most destructive verbal jab of the show. Honor, in the build up to the last fight, you were unusually kind to Dustin. Now on fight week, it's the exact opposite. So where did that switch happen? Because he got knocked the fuck out. Not McGregor fast, McGregor sleep. When personal trash talk fails, McGregor went one step ahead and started promising death to his opponent. As he said over and over again during fight week, Dustin would be the first person to die inside the octagon. This man is gonna learn that if you disrespect a person's kindness and take it as a weakness, you must pay. Tomorrow no, you ain't gonna make this man pay with his life, and I mean it. You're dead in that octagon tomorrow night. The comments clearly struck a nerve with Poirier, but unlike the first time, he maintained his composure made it to the main event of UFC 264 with a clear head on his shoulders. In contrast to the showdown at UFC 178, McGregor was the guy out for blood while Poirier was there to settle business. The fight reeked of karma. The first one to shoot for a takedown was a dusty bitch as McGregor laid down. I would have slipped his cross twice in that fight and throw my own. The second one, that's when he went down. We both missed, but the first one, I heard him. And that's why he started trying to grapple. You know, uh, was that like a, a surprise? Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my record in mixed martial arts competition is 19 wins and one loss. I only count knockouts. I only count knockouts. Submission didn't matter, as McGregor declared. KO or just to win? Saturday night. K.O. Out on a stretcher. This man is gone. Dustin Poirier would be leaving on a stretcher, as McGregor promised. All of this came back to McGregor, and on that night, Poirier put an end to the already battered mystique of Conor McGregor. Dustin Poirier will fight for the title, and Conor's healed and ready to go. You, you do the rematch, I guess. I don't know. After seven years of patience and struggle, he emerged from the shadow of McGregor, who himself was stretchered out of the octagon following an unfortunate injury to his leg. The rivalry was over. Dustin Poirier was the guy instrumental in the rise of McGregor back in 2014, as that first round victory gave birth to Mystic Mac and cemented the Irishman as an otherworldly fighter. Who would have thought that the same guy would put an end to it all? That recaps the saga of McGregor versus Poirier. The hatred is still very much alive, at least for McGregor, but in the context of the sport, the rivalry is over and the unlikely underdog emerged as the final victor. In the shadow of McGregor, Poirier put together one of the most impressive resumes in the current lightweight division and avenged his loss to the megastar not once, but twice. With two conclusive victories, Dustin brought the end to the McGregor era. I hope you enjoy this. This was a new concept I had in mind for a while, and going forward this will become a recurring segment. A good fight is what we need, but that sprinkle of bad blood always adds a little extra something. But for now, I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out. It's just so real. Um, nothing in the whole world, the whole world stops. Nothing else matters but this moment. A lot of these fights, man, I might need, you know, not even be better athlete, better technician, 
but I'm just okay with being uncomfortable and I out uncomfortable these guys, you know? That's what I, I still love that about fighting. That's what keeps me in love with this still.